So this, I think it is the 49th, uh, you know, webinar series, and it is a part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. You know, this is being celebrated all over the country, and sure. we have, you know, we are celebrating 75 years of our independence, 75 years of our culture. You must be seeing every day on the TV. We have every place. Yeah. Called as a cultural place is being, you know, expanded or it is being made into something better and something which is really memorable for us, you know. Sure, so sure, definitely. We yeah. in Skill Council are celebrating it by organizing webinar series or webinar or talks from learned people like you and uh, on different sectors. So the topic today which you have chosen, posterity has been added to the renewables, you know, the energy yes. transition and i think that is something which is very important you know we we have to leave a planet which is healthy yeah. which for which our, where our generations can breathe properly you know we should not leave a planet that that the next generation has to think of that we have to use masks we are already using masks so we have to do a transition we have to see how renewables can you know really bring about this transition we have to do it otherwise our posterity will not forgive us i think you must be knowing about that from sweden 30 years but spoken that right this is the time you have to take action. Absolutely. That's right. We yeah. have a very learned speaker with us. Professor connect us and tell us how this transition can be made more effective, long lasting, of course, and sustainable. So with that, I welcome you and I welcome all the participants. And I would request Mr. P.B. Singh to kindly introduce our honorable speaker today. Over to you, Mr. Singh. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much. Tax, uh, anything for you? I'm not present. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll welcome to the 48th series of the webinar, Fiscal Council for Green Job. is organizing a series of webinars to celebrate Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahasav 2022 as a part of India's celebration of 75 years of Independence Day. In this series, SCGJ is inviting eminent and learned speakers in different sectors of sustainable development, renewable energy, and waste management so as to deepen the understanding of recent development in these sectors. The first in the series was launched on 24th September 2021. Today, we have a very experienced, learned, and distinguished speaker who will be sharing his expertise and experience on India at 75, sustainable development, renewable energy, and austerity. Professor Sakarama Ji is currently working as a volunteer teacher to meet the education career gui guidance needs of the underprivileged students served by the Sri Chetra Osakate Trust Mundadi in Udupi, Karnataka. Before making the decision to work with the community, he served as the honorary, di honorary director project, Corporate Social Responsibility Rehabilitation, CISRO, Associate and Consultant, Private Limited, New Delhi, and Adjunct Professor at NTPC School, Business, Noida. He started his career in the planning, monitoring, and evaluation division, the National Dairy Development Board, Anand Gujarat. He is the fellow and area coordinator in social transformation division in the, in the relocation and rehabilitation group at the Energy and Resources Dairy. <clears throat> Professor Somayaji has extensive work experience of over three decades in in the area of rural social development, especially in the hinterlands of more than 15 major states of India. Professor Somaya has had the privilege of working under Dr. Vargis Kurian, Chairman NDDB, and Mr. Thomas Carter, Senior FAO, Consultant of NDDB Anand, Dr. R. K. Pachori, Director General Terry, uh, Professor Muchkun. Tube, President CST, 
Professor Pradeep Roy at CSD New Delhi. Professor Somaya Ji is a regular resource person to the UGC academic staff, college, GN New Delhi, University, FRI, Dehradun, etc. Uh, <clears throat> Professor Somaya Ji published several publications on environment, social displacement, social changes in Himalayan region, etc. Uh, thank you, uh, Sakara Meji. Now, over to you, sir, your presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. P.B. Singh, as well as uh, Madam. Uh, uh, let me take this opportunity to, in the beginning, to thank you all and welcome you all to this uh, 75th year of India's independence, Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotso, a very interesting moment of our uh, India's history. We all on a crossroads, I can call it as a, you know, very transitionary period, very important and crucial period of Indian history. India, as we all know, uh, 75 year old as far as independent is concerned. Otherwise, India is a very, very old and ancient country with a lot of its own culture, traditions, and a uh, lot of systems. Uh, if you go back to our civilization, particularly Indus Valley Civilization, we know what kind of uh, life and what kind of structure systems we had in terms of development, in terms of environment, in terms of uh, you know maintenance, in terms of coordination, cooperation. I think one of the richest culture, human culture on this entire universe, India should be very proud of it. And today what I'm going to present to you all are a few very fundamental things which have been repeated by many scholars, many books, many learned peoples, and many experiences. Although it is a kind of a repetition, but I will be adding some of my own experiences across the country in the last 30 years of my experience, where I worked, uh, as PBG has mentioned, with Dr. Kurian, Dr. Pachori, Dr. Thomas Carter, and many more across the country, starting from uh, Himalayan region to the Kanyakumari. So let me give a very brief understanding of what I am presenting to you all today. First of all, we all know sustainable development requires the integration of environmental, social, and economic concerns into all sections of decision-making or all sectors of decision-making. If you have this kind of a broad understanding, then only we can really explain what we meant or what we mean by sustainable development. It is not just a cliche as it is nowadays made out of, unfortunately, but it should be the theme of our development. Unless and until we have a very sustainable process of development where every one of us are not only responsible, but also accountable to our act on this uh, earth. Let us uh, come to the very another important part that is what is the current crisis? Today we are totally dependent on fossil fuels. More than 80% of our uh, global energy are now you know, taking out of uh, these fossil fuels. Like uh, as a result of this, as we all know, greenhouse gas is emissions are creating a major challenge to the whole universe that is climate change. And to, you know, a lot of countries, including India has signed so many uh, declarations, so many international uh, uh, agreements and, uh, uh, you know, so many uh, roundtable conferences uh, in year after year. And uh, in the last two decades, I think we had enough of such meetings and enough of just commitments and our uh, resolutions. However, there is a big gap, huge gap still exists between what we have committed, what, what we are supposed to do. Uh, in that way, India is doing rather good, but still we have a lot of gaps. Although we have committed a 500 gigawatts of, uh, uh, you know, any renewable energy commitment by another uh, 20 years, rather less than 20 years, by 2030, unfortunately, our target today is not even one third of what we have committed to. I can see the future uh, will be very, very challenging and uh, quite uh, you know tough for the future generation if we go ahead in the same business as usual fashion so that therefore i would request that you know 
not only uh, making targets and uh, talking about our uh, future requirements and future commitments we need to act upon what we have committed to and what we are really want to do and where, where we want to leave our new generation or the next generation and what we have to leave them unfortunately today's challenge is something which is uh, not by only academicians or the ministries or the say uh, different agencies it is every each and every human being on the earth need to understand this uh, difficulty and uh, understand this challenge and accordingly he or she should contribute towards making the world better every moment we need to work towards this for this uh, you know uh, there are uh, so many solutions so many plans programs but again let me emphasize uh, we are not dearth of any plans and programs what we lack is the commitment to implement them rather Uh, the commitment and the required uh, you know uh, manpower or energy or uh, uh, kind of a system we lack when i talk about system i am not saying only you know a government system or a centralized system what i personally emphasize from my experience is that it should start from the bottom it should start from each and every village it should start from each and every corner of our country and each and every corner of our on of our universe unless and until that kind of a you know committed efforts from across the globe on a day to day basis and in a very systematic way it's it will be very difficult to reach any of the targets by any countries so it is a it is a universal call it's a global challenge it's not uh, one india or one karnataka or one uh, district or one taluka but it is the universal and a global challenge for so that uh, i think uh, uh, there is a need for a global movement and a global uh, action oriented you know action oriented uh, day to day uh, life style from all of us in that context i would like to suggest a few very very important things although we have lot of budgetary uh, you know uh, commitments made by government of india towards solar wind and biomass and mini uh, hydros and then uh, gati shakti is one best example where lot of things is happening and then railways airports everywhere we are trying to do something or the other what i am going to present is a 10 point program which are rather very very practical important and experience based number one how to utilize the rain water that is excess water due to the climate change already we are experiencing heavy rains across the country sudden heavy rain cloud bursts and this excess water or the heavy rain that needs to be utilized it should not be you know considered as a threat or a problem instead we should think that it is a opportunity in the challenge itself it is an opportunity we are getting excess water so that let all our rivers once again become revived and we can utilize it for making more and more mini hydros across the country so that first thing is how to utilize the rain water and second thing is my is this whatever i am suggesting 10 points they are not in order that that can be taken in any order but the second point what i am making is how to avoid lot of huge programs like we conduct so many big rallies big cultural political social and you know uh, religious programs overnight i am sorry to say this but the time has come for us to use only sunlight instead of overnight programs and using so many generators dynamos using you know all fuse uh, fossil fuel based uh, uh, generators you know using uh, this diesel coal and other things we should avoid that so that our programs can be conducted during the day time from morning 6 to evening 6 so that let us use the sunlight and make the programs in the day time including the marriage parties every possible uh, social programs cultural programs can be conducted during daylight so that we can avoid that night programs and making so much of use of fossil fuels in the form of generator and other things and second point or the third point i am making is you can make lot of community based or public uh, utilities instead of every individual is having in his her home a lot of gadgets which really creates or contributes to the deterioration of our environment and spoiling our uh, you know uh, 
temperature it is increasing the temperature instead of that let us have common cold facility cold cold storage facilities in village level or taluka level let us have some public utilities which are used which can be used by each and every person instead of having everything at home and build the buildings in such a way that it should be open in all sides as far as possible let the sunlight come so that you can avoid the electricity lights in the daytime and you can also avoid acs you can also avoid fans as far as possible you know the just go back to 30 40 years of our parents time and when we were young there was no fans there was no ac in the village today unfortunately every household almost every household in the village has got a fridge has got a fan and some places you will find even acs which are actually we have we are committing day by day this kind of you know mistakes i call it so we we avoid that kind of thing so that our houses our villages are cool our life is also cool due to that avoid as far as possible you know all kinds of uh, uh, you know you know pressuring our human resource sorry our uh, natural resources don't put so much of pressure on natural resources try to utilize only what you need today don't make it a habit of cutting trees and building you know lot of things out of those uh, valuable forest try to save as much as forest and for that my best idea or the what i am experiencing is that we need more and more forests across the country not only in villages and the forest areas but we must think of urban forests wherever there is a possible land available in urban areas even if it is small uh, stretches of land try to grow forest in the urban areas when i say urban forest you need more and more urban water facilities when there is heavy rain you try to create some ponds and lakes in the urban areas uh, we know we have filled up many such ponds and uh, lake development we have finished those let us redig them and make some urban ponds urban lakes and urban forests so that our entire globe will cool down and so another point what i am suggesting is try to harvest water not only in cities but in villages and try to make use of them for as i said for the mini hydros as well as for growing forests and even you can use waste water in the cities and waste uh, garbage and other things in the form of manures to grow this forest in the cities using cycles and cycle rickshaws it is my again a humble request don't laugh at me when i say this all our neighborhood markets and neighborhood areas should not have any auto rickshaws and cars unnecessarily running unless and until it is essential like when you are in a very very uh, urgency or any any emergency then you use ambulance or cars or things otherwise as far as possible for picking up a packet of milk or anything don't use your vehicles try to use cycle or walk down within the neighborhood area of 2 to 3 kilometers we all should walk we, it it will keep ourselves healthy as well as our city healthy our market healthy and our fossil fuel will come down and pollution will come down and the global climate change will also you know come down so the another point is what i am trying to say is is the decoration of our uh, you know night programs and day programs also we use lot of lights and again generators avoid decorating things with lights please decorate things with flowers leaves any green things what usually our uh, ancient days we used to do and then also use some waste materials and decorate the things so that it will be beautiful don't use anything which will create again go global problem so in all these things one more important thing is we all must avoid plastic see when i say this it is very very important if you don't avoid plastic if you don't avoid uh, this uh, dangerous thing which has really created all these problems of water logging in the cities because it is choking all our uh, drainage systems please take cloth bags and steel containers and other containers and jugs and other things to bring milk curd oil everything as it used to be don't go for any any package materials plastics which are very very dangerous to our earth and very important part is in the parties we started now use and throw materials they are again very dangerous go back to plates and glasses go back to leaves and pattas 
don't use any things and try to create more ponds and lakes in and around your areas my point is here when i say all these things you can also think of some villages where it is completely rocky villages try to cover that rocks or try to build upon that rocks your solar panels so that that village will get more solar lights because see the solar plan um, if you want to create solar system you need lot many uh, i mean a huge amount of uh, space so i am suggesting for place uh, crunch you can go for you know rocky villages those on top of the rocks and in some wastelands where you can go for solar in the high level and then below that you can grow some whatever possible grains or grass which is useful to the animals or human beings there and the most important thing is biomass my humble request to all the technical people who are listening to me try to build and do more and more research r and d on these issues where every village needs a separate plan don't think of a global plan or a you know, all india level plan there can be all india targets but the plan should be village level plans regional plans state level plans because our india varies from place to place every 10 kilometers there is a difference sometimes even every 5 kilometers there is difference so try to look into those local nitty gritties and build your plans accordingly and make use of the resources accordingly there is a plenty of land and rocks and water bodies available try to rejuvenate all the water bodies whenever there is excess rain try to uh, divert that rain to those uh, you know dead bodies dead rivers make them alive once again so that you know this uh, climate change will become a kind of a, you know helpful for us whatever excess rain coming and all these things and second and most important part is this kind of uh, thing should start as i said from each one of us for that we need to introduce a kind of a, a kind of a informal syllabus like uh, what we used to have in schools a kind of a moral education we need an environmental awareness education in each and every school which is every day need it's not that you know you uh, print a book and give it to them no every teachers are supposed to talk about this environmental challenges this kind of uh, you know mitigation measures so that every child can practice it every household can practice it instead of throwing waste water let them use that water for growing uh, trees in and around the houses because uh, there are um, places where still i see both in urban and rural areas there are plenty of waste places available which may not be visible in one show or one vis- one observation but if you really minutely observe it you can grow lot of trees in and around for, for example delhi and bangalore are the best cities where you can grow more and more trees forget about you know some of the places where you have just kept it as uh, you know like uh, you know i can call it as you know um, for the future but i say first think of today then only you can save the future if you don't grow very good vegetations across that is uh, all kinds of trees and again i am saying don't bring any uh foreign trees or uh, you know extraordinary trees try to grow the trees which were growing earlier there that is local breeds and local uh, trees and plants should be planted as much as possible and it should be taken care of not by government programs Go. government can help it's very good but it should be taken care of for, from the local bodies panchayats villagers households every should be responsible and accountable if we don't go with this war footing and try to correct our mistakes or try to improve our uh, situation all sustainable development will be laughable uh, phenomena because unless and until we are practicing practicing the sustainability in our day to day life any sustainable development plan will be only limited to the books and it will be only for the seminar halls and discussions so my humble request to all the listeners is that let us take a step forward in such a way that let us not wait or let us not blame anybody let us not uh, show our fingers towards let him do it if he do if she does i will do it no i will do it whether she does she he or she do it or not let me be an example let me be an uh, you know first in this area so this kind of uh, attitude and orientation is very very important every school can have a very good garden every school can have number of trees across around them and don't try to see that trees are only required for cutting and using for our houses and our 
you know, uh, financial purposes, profit making. No, trees are required for good rain. Trees are, trees are required for good water. Trees are required for good air, fresh air, fresh water, and timely rain is possible only if there is a vibrant vegetation and very good forest in and around us. And similarly, not the least, but uh, uh, I'm trying to put up one more point that is wherever there is uh, uh, mounds like like uh, small uh, hill hillocks and hillocks don't try to flatten them and use that you know uh, mud for your uh, construction purpose try to put good trees in that mound so that that will become a natural very beautiful forest and that will also help us in uh, getting good rain or stopping bad air or pollution so that it will help us Similarly, in many villages, you can find uh, small, small uh, places where two, three trees will be there and some mounds will be there. They may be, you know, created by uh, some kind of uh, uh, creatures or some uh, snakes or some uh, rats. There are muds, uh, mounds. So you must use that to build more and more, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, plant more and more trees in and around that place so that animals will also survive our environment also improve and we'll get a good air. And these are all possible to be done at the village level by villagers themselves. We need to just help them and guide them and orient them and be with them. And practically one has to start in every village. If one person takes a vote today in every village that he will set right his village as far as environment is concerned, he will make a uh, water body regenerated, which is dead due to our own mistake or he will clean a uh, you know uh, unsafe water body or he or they will do something uh, you know growing forest that will become a movement we see you know every year there will be people awarded for their best efforts on environmental things but that should not be limited to one person or one one organization it should be a movement it should be in each and every village for that matter uh, the cycling cycle rickshaws uh, water uh, bodies cleaning and then uh, going by walking, all these things, we don't need anybody's help. These are all, you know, I'm talking today this because I'm practicing it and I'm finding it so interesting. And I'm, I tell you, three years back, I, I'm giving my own example. Three years back, I was almost, uh, you know, about to be admitted to a hospital. Today, I don't need any treatment. Uh, thank God, this is due to the nature in which I'm living here in a very nice uh, area surrounded with forest and beautiful trees and plants and uh, water bodies. So I'm uh, giving an example where this is being preserved and now it is being further improved day by day. Every year we are, we are planting plants. You know, the, every year we are cleaning the water bodies. Every year we are uh, uh, desilting the old lakes and other things wherever possible. And, uh, you know, there are programs by Government of India, Maneraga and other things. So we can take that labor self. These are all very, very important things so that every one of us, by boond boond se hum ek bhot badiya environment create kar sakte. Desh ke ajadi ka ye amrit mohsav ke sandarb mein humar liye isse bada gharu ke baat kya ho sakte. Main aap sab se anurod karta hoon. Aapko ye desh ke satantra ke baare mein agar baat karna hai. If you want to speak about Amrit Mohso and if you really feel proud of your India and proud of your independent India, and if you want to keep an independent and a healthy India for the future, then I think we all have to take a vote and we have to start working from just right now without wasting even a one minute. Every one of us and try to avoid all the plastics. Don't bring anything in which is available in plastic. You go with your containers, you go with your cloth bags. You use all the, uh, you know, uh, go back to your uh, uh, earlier days when you were young. How was India? There was no plastic. There was no this kind of uh, pollution. There was no this kind of uh, scarcity of water or excess of rain. It's all because we have played, rather misplayed, and we have really, you know, tampered with the nature very badly. And for that, we are all paying the price. And... In fact, when I say we, see, we all have a responsibility. Where are, where are we leaving our children today? Are we leaving them in the midst of a concrete jungle? Are we leaving them in a poisonous uh, chamber? Are we leaving them in a place where there is no water to drink? Are we leaving them in a place where they cannot even walk? So what we are doing all about? So my humble request once again to all of you, 
that we need to say that enough is enough. Knowingly or unknowingly, we have done some mistakes. We all have to agree and we need not feel ashamed of it. It has happened all over the globe. Across the globe, this kind of mistakes has happened. So let us correct it. And this is a time. And if we don't correct today and tomorrow is too late, tomorrow will not be, we will not be able to see the tomorrow. Our children will not be able to live in on this uh, planet Earth. So with these words, uh, let me take a break. If you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer. I'm not emotional. I'm very rational. When I say these things, it is practically possible in village level. If you have any practical questions across the country. One more thing before I give the break. Let me, one more thing I am telling you. We talk about so much about solar. Let me tell you one thing. There will be a very big imbalance because see, solar is plenty available or solar we are seeing in Southern India and Western India. Whereas fossil fuel, that is basically coal we are seeing in Central India and Eastern India. Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, all these places we'll see lot many mining activities and coal is the main source of energy and which is coming to across the India through in the form of electricity and everything. Similarly, when you come to solar, it is in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, these places. So if you suddenly say we'll give up fossil fuel and we'll only depend on the solar, then there will be a big imbalance in terms of opportunities and in terms of uh, job opportunities. What will happen to those thousands and lakhs of people who are working in those uh, uh, mines and other places who are completely dependent on that uh, activity today? So it has to be in a very, very uh, planned manner. And so that, you know, solar also goes there and some of these fossil fuel is, um, fossil fuels activity stops Every year, say every year, a percentage of things will stop and all open cast mining should be immediately stopped as far as possible so that we will not get into the, you know, damage which happening. I'm, I'm saying this not only for India, wherever there is a uh, open cast mining going on, which needs to be stopped because we, we cannot afford this anymore. Oh, and global warming and climate change are the two things which used to be only academic uh, discussions, but now they are realities. Day in and day out, we are finding the examples across the globe. Every day things are happening and we are facing the challenges. So let me say once again, if there is any doubt in anybody's mind that development is the only way that we are doing today, like what we are doing today, it has to continue. I'm sorry, this will continue for a while. And then as uh, you know, an economist said, uh, in the long run, everybody will be dead. There will be nothing but a totally disturbed and destroyed earth. So you decide what kind of development we need in that sustainability and this renewable energy are the most important part. These are the two pillars. Renewable energy is the only way out and all things which are renewable, uh, energy as well as anything which you can really renew it or we can renew, regenerate, we can renew it, that only we have right to use and not the other thing which is going to destroy our earth. Thank you so much. Let me wait for the questions. If there is no questions, I will take another 10 minutes to go ahead and uh, conclude. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think, thank you very much. Yeah, you are talking of a circular economy and we yes. all have to now adopt a circular economy. I don't think there are any questions because I think the whole thing has been presented so beautifully. But, you know, development, as you said, it is an issue. We have recently seen, heard, you know, we have seen in the news that uh, in the one uh, so village has been solarized you know it has been totally solarized uh, with solar power yes and uh, it is 80 crores yeah so <laughs> that is also a cost which we have yes. to bear we how can we we'll have to balance because you know we have a population see, most of it we have it in the rural areas but there is poverty there is you know a lot of population which is below the poverty line yeah. So there are other issues of food, there are other issues of housing, there are other issues. So how we have to make a balance, that is what I understand. And in that balance, yeah. 
how fast we can do it that is the question see uh, mm. let me just uh, uh, it's not an answer i am going to give you but yeah. uh, let me present it in such a way that you see we need to learn from our past we need yeah. to learn, yeah. learn from our forefathers yeah. how they lived when there was so much of scarcity of resources even then they lived a better life i i can very confidently say that uh, but there are areas where we need to work in a in a in a you know very very uh, holistic and comprehensive manner what is happening today is that is why i have used these four five big words in my presentation sustainable development environment uh, renewable energy and foster it see they are all very much linked if we don't look into them as a same part of a same chain even if you miss one then we will not be able to reach the final goal so government is in a position to give us money or plan and help us but i think at the village level most of us have a tendency i am saying this with the total responsibility most of us have a tendency that जो मैं कर रहा हूँ वो ठीक है अगले वाला ठीक कर दे मतलब इट इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल टू मी वट एवर आई एम डूइंग इट्स फाइन बट ऑल द अदर थिंग्स लेट द अदर पर्सन और माई नेबर डू इट सो दिस एटीट्यूड मस्ट चेंज एज अ सोशोलॉजिस्ट आई एम ऑब्जर्विंग इट डे इन एंड डे आउट पीपल आर ट्राइंग टू ब्लेम अदर्स वेर एस दे आर नॉट सींग देर ओन मिस्टेक्स और देर ओन यू नो पॉसिबल एक्शन विच आर ऑल्सो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू द डैमेज ऑफ द नेचर एंड डैमेज ऑफ द क्लाइमेट सो माई रिक्वेस्ट हियर इज that tendency should change and that can change only with the you know like not the grown up people like us it will be very difficult to uh, make uh, changes in the minds or the attitude of the grown up people so it's better to concentrate more on the new generation that is the young generation and uh, you all aware that uh, our population is today one of the youngest population in the world and more than 51% of the people are below 25 years of age and more than 65% are below 35 years of age so it's a young india let the young india take up it and we can only facilitate and help them because see, we are the i blame our generation as the most uh, irresponsible generation we have done this damage mm. it has happened in front of our eyes over the last 3 4 decades and we all have felt that you know like that uh, uh, frog in the uh, water when the water was getting warm we were feeling comfortable the frog was feeling comfortable but now it is boiling so my point here is let the new generation take an initiative whereby they will also try to learn and uh, live with little less comforts because so called comforts has caused all these problems mm. so much of acs in all the cars so much of acs in every place you know our country doesn't need ac in fact in many parts mm. of the country it is it is not required if you mm. all of us stop using ac temperature will come down mm. this is one example we have seen in our village mm. we don't use any fans we don't use any acs and mm. village is very comfortable and there are a lot of space between you know houses and then there are a lot of uh, greenery and uh, water body has been regenerated mm. new fresh water is available so mm. my point here is when i said urban forestry urban lakes urban ponds things will change hmm. so yeah. my request rather to all the listeners and uh, even when you you know try to share with others my request to all of us is that you know uh, we should think differently we should uh, try to live differently we have lived enough in the way which we lived and which is clearly showing us with the proper examples that we are doing wrong rather we have on a wrong path let us change that path Mm. let us try to live a better life by making certain corrections yeah this is what i yeah and we need to go back to some of the traditional ways we revive those ways which were see like you said ac there was a system of ventilation in our old houses also see. i remember you know we were also posted in up and we never had acs or anything and the they were there were electricity cuts also but then mm. there was no need yes the fan and people see. used the hand pans you know yeah, people yeah. used okay. hand pans yeah <laughs> so there is a need yeah. to go back but then of course it is a crusade i feel you know everybody they are so much lost in the entire process that they no. have to we have to make them rethink 
youngsters but we have no have... other way we have no yeah. other option we will yeah. end ourselves in such a way that we will not be able to come back mm. even if we you know decide on the day that uh, let us go back now mm. there is a chance but yes. after some time maybe after 20 25 years mm. i don't see whether uh, you know our new generation will make a drastic change then only there is a possibility otherwise there is every possibility that we may reach a point where it will be you know point where we cannot come back we will be only crying or we will be only finishing ourselves yeah. so human civilization needs water air and uh, you know atmosphere and mm-hmm. when we spoil that how human beings can live mm. so renewable youngsters who have taken up you know some like some of the we keep listening and reading that many youngsters have formed their ngos they are going and working in the rural areas trying to revive systems so that i think it should be more no more see ways. there are two ways ma'am one is uh, basically there has to be some demonstration effect yes like we are talking about now one village fully solarized i am yeah. sure there may be another couple of villages also yeah. maybe they are not in publicity but what i mean to say is that there has to be some demonstrations the best place is the school buildings mm. in every village there will be a huge uh, place available in front of the school big mm. gardens big uh, playgrounds and surrounded by a lot of you know place so if that place can be made totally a green place and uh, ask children not to read in their house using everybody one ac one fan one light let them spend more time in that village school only Mm. Uh, we are doing in our school we are asking children to stay up to 6 o'clock so that when they go back home they can just simply eat enjoy and sleep they are not going to read anything in their home all their work will be done at school only 3:30 school closes but another 2 and 1/2 hours we keep them at school and mm. we make sure that they reach uh, house by 6 6:30 when there is broad daylight mm. so this kind of arrangement can be done and those schools can be a model for entire village mm. Uh, one that so and we, second you see in the minute, okay please please carry on yeah, yeah. second thing is see a uh, lot many places are filled up with the silt they were actually basically uh, lakes and ponds in villages itself i am talking about mm. such three to four uh, ponds will be there in at least in a large village and in a small yeah. village at least one pond will be there Yes. first thing is that needs to be uh, regenerated yes. that water body needs to be regenerated yes yeah uh, see we in the ministry i was also in mnre we have been doing so many demo projects but the technology that time was not so good you know they did not mm-hmm. sustain through some we did through biomass using biomass through gasifiers some mm-hmm. we did through biofuel some right. we did through solar you know wind as a because wind is not there everywhere so we have been trying so many projects so many models or demonstrations you can say so though the technology has really evolved in the solar project which we have uh, seen now there the technology is somewhat better mm. so maybe when we when we look at villages in a now if we look at at the technology and development and the villages in a different way maybe some better solution can be taken up or can be done schools of yeah. course yeah schools schools of course are one place which always uh, find See, in a, uh, ma'am uh, sorry to interrupt you no, no, in sorry. every village there will be two to three public institutions one is school mm. one is milk cooperative society one is village panchayat mm. and uh, one may be temple i mean saying a large village three to four public utilities will be there if you can concentrate them because that belongs to everyone irrespective of caste creed and uh, political party and everything so mm. that is the place where you can make the people come around and you know turn around that as a green place so once such green places are created in say in every block couple of villages to begin with that will become a real model and that should be totally responsibility of that villagers we can only help them but it should not be considered as you know oh, it should not that they will wait for us to come and do it we can only help them support them but it has to be taken care of by them mm. when the initiative comes from the villagers themselves and that can come only when they realize their you know emergency and the importance of this cause what we are facing today i think many of the villagers have now stopped cutting forest mm. they are uh, in a large uh, places i am finding some greenery is coming up mm. the last 10 years uh, no much cutting of firewood and all yes so that is a good sign people mm. have switched over to gas 
but mm-hmm. uh, again coming to the reality now it is quite uh, becoming difficult for them to afford again i'm i have a fear whether they will go back to again forest and mm-hmm. cut the fire wood cost cost because of the cost yes yes cost yes availability is available availability means you know it is uh, difficult for them to buy the i mean refill the ca- gas in many yes. uh, villages so that is again a challenge and then one more thing is i am coming to a point which is i have mentioned while talking um things are happening in a you know isolated individual level my mm. point is it should happen in a community level and a public level mm. uh like uh, if there is a drinking water facility it should be available to the entire village not every house will have a ro system every house will have a you know thing can can, can there be a village level uh, drinking water facility which is yeah. pure and it reaches every house instead of having a ro and again wasting water electricity there similarly when i said uh, this big uh, baraths and marriage parties you know happening overnight and then cultural activities happening rallies happening so much of lights you know they don't want to any interruption so there will be huge generators using so much of diesel this all mm-hmm. can be shifted to daytime let us in south we are having now all the marriages in daytime only we don't have any marriage in the night Mm. and uh, there were some cultural program they used to happen from 9 in the night to early morning 6 that has been reduced to now 3 hours it mm. starts at 6 6:30 in the evening and closes at 10 a time bound kar diya unko okay. so that's so, very good yeah yeah so my request rather to the all audience or listeners is that you know we should find out some own small steps uh, all small small steps will make a very big achievement yes so hundreds of villages doing the same thing like today hundreds of villages are doing the same thing in a different way and we are getting the result suppose we turn around and make it a different way in a in a in a in a very you know possible and feasible way things will change mm-hmm. so i think uh, if we go on we can continue our discussions but yeah right yeah, yeah so i want to thank you and uh, we it was a very nice uh, this thing and i feel that consciousness is there people will adopt ji they may adopt by choice or by compulsion so they have to adopt it otherwise our human yeah. race will become entirely extinct that's right it may not be there but the entire as you said posterity is, has to face it yes. so some realization is there so yeah. thank you very much and i request mr pb singh to kindly uh, give the vote of thanks thank ma'am, you ma'am uh, uh, ma'am uh, once uh, uh, can you ask any question from participants yeah. yes <coughs> if there is any question from the participants okay uh, let me let me take one second uh, pbg and ma'am so my uh, see there may be people uh, busy they are not uh, listening to or they may not be able to ask the question right now and most of the things are what i talk this not an very you know uh, not a very different thing they all be knowing all these things but the point what i am again reemphasizing is let us not forget that we all have a responsibility to leave a good earth to the future generation because we enjoyed what our poor fathers have left us is a very good uh, you know situation and we enjoyed it the last 40 50 60 years what we have enjoyed uh, it is our responsibility now to see that you know whatever corrections we can do when we are alive because afterwards we can only hear <laughs> who blames us or who curses us we don't know but i think even now it is not too late all mm-hmm. of us who are uh, my it is again a very very idealistic but i am practicing it who are above 55 or 60 they should take a oath that remaining my life will be devoted for improving the earth so that you know next 10 20 years we can really make a difference so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and mm-hmm. i would uh, rather uh, you know, appreciate this great initiative taken by the ministry and your particular organization and i would be very very happy to share many more of these things because each of every concept what i have talked today it needs lot of time to explain i was in a hurry so i explained it in a very very half hazard way it's not an academic yeah. presentation altogether but my request to all of you is that if anybody wants to reach out to me my email id and my telephone number is there and uh, 
practically they can come down to my place and stay with me for some day and help us also and learn something together thank you so much okay. <clears throat> thank you sir thank you very much uh, professor saka rama ji for a uh, very good presentation and very good uh, presentation and knowledgeable presentation thank you sir and uh, thanks to all the participants who are uh, given his valuable times thank you all thank you very much thank you sir thank you thank you very much thank you have a good day thank you thank you, thank you.